on to the next speaker. We have Shireen Rose. By any other name, okay? And she's going to have the topic of essence of your mastery. Known as the wordsmith, Shireen has honed a skill as a communicator over 20 years. As the executive director of BNI, Clang Valley South, she spoke to 750 business owners in a single event. That's like many times this. Focusing on access, opportunities, and leadership with the intention to uprise Malaysia and roar. I asked her whether it's an acronym, so I'm trying to roar. Over to you, Shireen. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank, you, thank you, everybody. I'm not too sure whether I should be standing on stage or down here, but because Dr. Mike did such a fantastic job. Please give a big hand for such an amazing morning, right? I mean, everyone's energized. I'm like, oh my god, I'm after Dr. Wendy, what am I going to say? And um, yeah, I was there on the, uh, on the, on the stage today, you know, when I um, get my courage, you know, I'm just uh, finding my ground right now. And yes, and I, I really wanted to talk about the essence of mastery because we're all speakers in the room. And I want to start by asking a couple of questions. Is that we okay with everybody? Yeah, so how many of you have entered a room and you guys are really super excited? Somebody has sold you an idea. You've seen the campaign. You've seen the write-ups. You go, oh my god, this guy's amazing. The content's amazing. You've gone on YouTube. You've seen this person speak, her, she, whoever this may be. You got so strong, not so sure. You get into your room, all excited, got your pen out. This guy steps out, speaks for five minutes, you go, God, what have I paid? What am I doing here? And after an hour or two hours stay in a room, you go, oh, I don't want to go open. Ever? Yeah. Been there? Yeah. Awesome. Okay. I thought I was the only one. Yeah, and, um, and maybe another one, just one more. For some of us, right, you get invited to speak in an event. And you get like, I have so much to do, I don't have time to write. Never mind tomorrow, I'll be back. Then never mind tomorrow, I'll be back. Then tomorrow, I'll be back. Then tomorrow is coming and you're going to move on. I have not prepared anything. And you panic. And you take out your books. And you read, oh, not bad on this idea, right? Not bad on this idea, right? Then I think I got some notes from my other programs. I'm going to take this off. Okay, lah, I write. Then you sum it up and you go like, I'm going to stand up, I'm going to speak, and make it mine. Anybody did that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, this is the reason why I'm speaking today. Because it is so much easier for us to take, to adopt, and to borrow someone else's brilliance and make it ours. Right? But yet everybody here has a mastery. mastery. And this is the reason why I chose to talk today. We are all swimming in an ocean of masters, sifus, masters, gurus. They'll, they'll come up and tell us, I'm a guru of this, I'm a guru of that. Have you seen those? Every day in your feed, every day in your Facebook, someone's a master of something and invite you to do something with that. So why am I talking about this? It's not because I'm a master. It's because everybody here is a master. But how do we? own our mastery? How do we show up in our mastery? How do we be our mastery? So, mm, I wanted to do this topic because my name, that was my introduction, uh -huh. So my name is Shree, and I call myself Leaders of Leaders. Why? Because I run the community of business owners where I sit at the helm of leadership. I run an entire region, and under my care are 230 business owners. I groom them, I hone them, I coach them, I mentor them. And the, for the intention of them to step up and become better leaders, better take better ownership of their mastery in the respective industry they're in. And I also believe that a lot of people do not know that they have skill sets. They do not know that we're all born leaders. And when they step up, about 20, 30 of them right now, I'm coaching them because they believe in mastery and they believe in leadership. So when I stand up here and talk about mastery, and I talk about leadership, I'm not talking
talking to you because I read a book. I'm not talking to you because I took up some credentials and accredited myself and I paid for it. I'm speaking to you because I have a story to share. I'm talking to you because I'm leaders of leaders. I talk to 200 people all the time. I'm coaching 20, 20 on a regular basis. And in this country, I sit and support over 5,000 business owners. But why? Eh? Because once upon a time, when I wanted to lead, everybody said, I sucked. <laughs> Nothing I did could be right. Nothing I said could be satisfactory to all of them. Have you really have done this before? Like, no matter what you do, people don't like you. No matter how much you serve, maybe, maybe say, they will say, it's not enough. No matter how much you give, they will say, more please. Familiar? Yeah? So about eight years ago, about eight years ago, I fell in love with the Malay language. I grew up in Malaysia, but I was introduced to this community where they had this most beautiful way of transacting and doing business in the Malay language. I fell in love. It was so beautiful. And I said, you know what, I'm going to build a community of business owners who, who likes to speak in Bahasa Melayu, who likes or prefers to transact and do business Bahasa Melayu. And I'm going to lead it. And I did. I went to Shala, where I felt most of the folks spoke in Bahasa Melayu like the language, and the folks in clan also preferred the language. I said, okay, lah. we'll start a group there. And I started. And I went on and on and on. I was so passionate. Let's do this. Let's do this. Got to know everybody. Spoke to them every day. And then one person stood up. And she said, she did an embarrassment to the community. I go, huh? How could you even dare to champion a language that you can't speak? You don't even own it. And you want to lead it. I jam it up. Because in my head, what has it to do with anything? So what if I can't speak the language very well? I was in love with it, and I wanted to champion it. Eight years down the road, though it, eight years ago, nobody followed me. Today, I have five. I have five because I stayed at it. I did it, I persevered, and I have five, and I now speak bloody good for them. And a couple of years later, in a in the business community, an entire business community came out and banded against me. And they said, Shui and I, you're not a bad person. You're okay, lah. Not bad. But your leadership sucks. No matter what you do, you know, yes, you got things done. Yes, you got the accolade. Yes, you got us as far as you could. Thank you for making us 50 business owners strong. Now you can be, thank you very much. Get out. Go, go, bye bye. Sign it out. I was like, huh? I is jam. You know? First, you invite me, you invite me to be a leader. You ask me to help you grow. And I did exactly what you wanted of me. And I'm just not good enough. A few years later, another group, she please help us. Help us grow. We are at, at, at a space where we are so stagnant. And in six months, I grew them to a community that could transact with 500 people. And they said, fantastic, good job. But you're the <laughs> us. Actually, you're a bitch. Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> the language they use, sorry, pardon my French, but you use it anyway, right? So, yeah, and, and, and I was like, this is not working. I lead, but I'm not good enough. I get things done, but I'm not like. Eh, how la? You People say, yes, you are a master. You can lead, but you're not good enough, so I don't like you. Until I realized that actually what happened was they smelled something from me. And it's actually bullshit. And I'm like, oh, come on, what is it 
about me that is not authentic? What is it about me that is not working for everybody? So I took a step back and I reflected. And I would like you to do the same thing, same thing for yourselves. I realized that for the entire time that I was asked to lead, I was leading in other people's expectations. People would tell me, Shireen, you are too brutally honest. And I'm like, okay, and then? So you have to be nicer. Be nicer. We pick people, don't be brutal, be nice. And I'm like, okay, we shall do that. And I was really nice, and I was really nice, and trying to lead, but being nice. Try, uh, try and lead and be nice. <laughs> you know, I, I need to do something, but please, uh, can help me or not? I need this done, but please, uh, by tomorrow, can or not? I, need, I know Siva was having a tough time. He did the slides, right? And everyone's like, Wait, I have a deadline, come in! I have a deadline, I only have two. Okay, okay, come in. When did you get it? Were you nice? You're absolutely very nice. Yeah, so I had to be nice. And I murdered myself in the process because I couldn't get things done. Shree, you're a bulldozer. How many of you guys are bulldozers? Mampus lah, what's idea, right? Yeah, but bulldoze. But can you Shree? In Malaysia, there's a process. But step one, step two, Mr. A, Mr. C, and sometimes there's also some cash running around. <laughs> right? So you cannot bulldoze, must follow the process. Okay? I, I follow the process, must enroll you, must enroll you, must enroll you, must enroll you. Must enroll you. And then the thing goes into a 360 because sometimes after I enroll somebody, somebody got disenrolled. Nothing gets done. And then another one, Shireen, you're an ice cream. You think everything must be like that. Then what happened to people here? I said, I don't know. Because I'm a leader, I'm supposed to elevate people. So I stand here and I say, come, come, come. Then they say, no, cannot. You cannot do that. You must go down and grovel with them. So I went down and grovel with everybody. Once I did grovel with everybody, everybody stood up and kicked sand in my face. This did not work, right? Now how do I showcase people that I am in my mastery, that I am a leader in my own right. How do I do that? You know, whoever you guys are doing right now, think about this. So I'm turning 50 in a couple of years. What? <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Dr. Wendy, can I? Can I break the Hana? Okay. I'm 20, awesome. I will buy you coffee outside. Okay. So what I found out was, I woke up one day and said, you know what? I am done. I'm done playing the game. I'm done sitting in other people's expectation. I have no time. I have to read. I gotta think get things done. So I woke up and said, hello. I'm a master of brutally honest. And because I'm honest, the truth is seen. Everything is done in transparency. I get it done, no hanky panky. I'm a master of a bulldozer. I don't have time to wait. You don't have the time to wait, you're not in my team. Don't like, it's okay. You like, you follow. I am an ice queen. I don't have time to ask you, can you please move from one place to another place, 1% every day and progress. And I have to wait. Come, come. Come, brother. Come. Okay, tomorrow never. Come, come. What time, eh? I've got so many people in the room. Come, come. Come, come, once we get it done, or when I'm going to get things done. So I decided, hey Shree, who are you? How can I be a leader in my mastery, be, a, be absolute authentic? So I worked at it. I worked at it, and I worked at it. I became honest. Siri, <laughs> job. So, yeah, so I was like working on being honest, being seen as honest doing everything, and I was so scared. What if I was this leader, and people won't follow? Then my mentor said, how you know if you don't know? So what I did was I worked and worked and worked. So if you have found your mastery, my brothers and my sisters, my fellow speakers in the room, if you have found your mastery, what you need to do, you have to believe in it. And I became, and I grew myself to be a leader that I didn't have. But at first, I had to figure out who I was.
And these were the questions that I worked on. So I want you guys to go ahead and put on a paper. And I want you to ask yourself these questions. What am I? How am I? Don't change the question. It's grammatically incorrect for a reason. Okay? So what am I? How am I? And what I want you to do for me is, I want you to think of only one word. What's Smith can? So only one word. One word only that represents a value in your life that you cannot negotiate. Come what may, you will stand by this value. One word only. So if you have three, five, means you have not thought about it. So that's okay. Have a thought. But I want just one word. So I worked on myself for a couple of years. Remember I said eight years, right? So I did that. Yes. And my word was unity. It's not united, it's not united. I believe in unity. And because I believe in unity, everything I did after that reflected this essence of unity. In my leadership, I chose BNI, Givers Game. In my company, my philosophy is build bridges. I opted to, uh, to be part of a community in England called Collaboration Global. I did everything in NGOs for the purpose of unity. Don't you think the country needs it? Yeah? So what happens? Now I know I'm unity. How do I show up? What am I being? I'm unity. And what happens in this practice, every day showing up in unity? <laughs> I screwed up. I love up. After all that work I did on myself, I still screwed up. I'm still not getting this right. I want to be a master of my trade. I want to be seen in leadership. You know, I want to help people and I still screw up. What's not working? This is what I learned. I'm going to ask better questions. Not just asking me the questions, but asking everybody that I'm meeting questions. And what I found out was everybody else had their words. Don't you have a word? Is your word unity? No, right? So how do I show up in leadership, show up in unity, and meet you, and roll? But how do I communicate with you so I can speak and support you with your words? It was a lot of things to do. So what I did was, I found three focus of areas. Areas of three focus when I deal with leadership. The first thing I have to do is my inner self. Be really, really clear on what I want to do. Be really, really clear so that when I show up, you will smell me. I walk into the room and you smell me. So how did I learn this? So I went to Yasan Perdana a couple of years ago, and I wanted to talk to um, Dr. Mahade. I went there with Johan, actually. And um, we sat there, and we were so excited, you know, like people do. And it was, we were talking, and we were talking, and suddenly there was absolute silence in the room. It was like so quiet, and nobody knows why. And suddenly, at the end of the room, came this woman. The power that he brought into the room was just immense. It's the essence of his mastery. He's a powerful leader. And we could smell him, feel him, all his energy. Can we do that? Why not? Sure can one, right? But only if you know what you stand for. Otherwise, your energy is all over the place. So you need to harness that energy, you need to know what it is. Oh, sorry. So once you understand who you are, you get to connect with the other person in front of you. What is their leadership style? Who are they? What do they represent? How can I connect with this person? Now remember, just because you have to do this, it doesn't have to be done with everybody. It has to be done with people who are like-minded. Then you can go. Right? And everybody will follow. But you have to work with people who are like-minded that goes in this room. I'm sure there's a reason why you're in maps. You're in maps because there's like-minded folks in this room who wants to support each other in terms of speaking. Uh, yeah. And then the outer leader, these are the people you cannot control. These are the government, the agencies, the country, the world, the war, whoever the leaders are, whatever their values are, how do you run in tandem with them in such a way that you still can hold your ground and work around with them? Follow so far? Make sense? Yeah? So I'm a bit serious, uh. 
So I asked you, I don't first say no more fun. Yeah, okay. So what I did was, because I needed to communicate, I had to be, I had to be intentional with my words. Why? Because I'm into unity, but not everybody is. And my unity's definition may not be the same as someone else. So I want to share with you just an incident a couple of days ago. Someone, one of my leaders came up and said, you just invalidated me. Oh, how do I invalidate you? And she was saying something I, I should not be told to fix what's not broken. And then my response was, being present is not fixing. I just want you to be present, don't fix things. Somehow, the communication that she heard was invalidating. Did anybody hear anything invalidating from there? I just want you to be present, don't fix. But she said, you invalidated me. I was super confused. And what I was speaking to Fanny actually, now where, where did I invalidate her? Tell me, please help me. And she said, very powerful, sometimes you need to be, you need to be in a, in a community where people are like-minded. She said something that was always very obvious, but because you're in a mix of things, you cannot see it. She said, you gotta be a stand for people who are willing to learn. If you're not willing, they're not willing to be coached, right? There's nothing you can do there, right? So the teachers only arrive when the students are ready. Like today, I'm giving you tons and tons of nuggets. Take it, don't take it, what works, right? Only when you're ready. So this is why I really want to talk to you about the essence. Your essence can be smelt. People can feel you, your energy. So choose your words wisely. Collect all those words that really, really represents you, what you are stand for. Always be super clear of your intention. I came here with a single intention of just sharing my experience and how I got into this room and how I lead and led people. Because in all honesty, yeah, I am allergic to people, believe me or not. We are super allergic. I bring into rashes. Hmm. I am a writer. How many writers do you know speak? Writers like to go into a cave, take a book with him, take a and pepper, coffee, and stay there for hibernate for a few months, right? That's what we do. But I cannot grow if I stay in my comfort zone. Have you heard about that? Comfort is where when things are beautiful, nothing goes there. So if I want to grow, I have to grow up. So hence my decisions. So I am also known as a work coach, and I want to do this for you. I have a couple of tools, and I think I have time, right? Do I have time? Do I have time? Do I have time? Five minutes. Fantastic. And I know that things can be really crazy. So one of the things I want you guys to do is I want you guys to be complete. So what I want you to do is I want you guys to go outside and ask people, when I come into a room, very important question, write it down. When I come into a room, what do I bring with me? Don't rephrase that question. It's not supposed to be grammatically correct, it makes sense. I said only once. What do I bring, or when I come to the room, what do I bring with me? I don't know, I hope you said not apprehension. Did you say apprehension? No, right? Oh, happiness, okay. <laughs> Happiness. You know, I had a friend once, when she enters the room, I would run because I feel chaos. I would run. I would sit down like this. And then she said, oh my gosh, she's here. It's not because she's not nice, it's just it's so chaotic. I feel very unsettled. Have friends like that? Yeah. Have friends, they pick up the door and go, oh my god, my energy is going to go down by 25%. Got friends like that? Yeah. You look, I don't want to pick this one. I don't want to, right? And then your friends who just walks in the room and you can smell roses and you can smell really beautiful things and you just feel happy that they're there. This is essence, right? So I want you to go out and I want you to find out what is your essence. So these are the um, essence of me that people say I was. You don't have to agree with it. When I found out I was light, hot, and fun, the first thing I did was I cried. I cried because I couldn't be with. 
I couldn't be with it. Because if I was kind, how come people didn't like me? If I was light, how come people don't follow me? If I was high, then how come nobody loves me? It was really hard for me. However, however, somebody saw this essence in me. People will see things that you don't about yourself. What you need to do, you need to embrace it, and you need to work on it. Be complete. On days that you don't feel complete, knowing that this is who you are, you need to find people who represent this, hang around with them, and replenish your energy. So be complete before you show up. Don't come to anywhere, in any room, 90% ready, 70% ready, cannot. Be complete. And then, be clear. In leadership, there's only one third rule. I love this rule. It really made me show up more comfortably. There'll be one third of people in the room who will love you to death. Gold comes out of your mouth. They follow you everywhere. And then there's one third of the population who will hate you to death, no matter what. Remember the one I was saying, I serve you, not good enough. I give you, I want some more. There'll be that one third. And if you want to tell people, don't care you live or die. <laughs> as long as you give, you give me what I want. You die, never mind. You live, never mind. <laughs> but what do you have for me today? So what do you focus on? The one third love. Right? Then your energy is well spent. And all your mastery is, is well delivered. Because they want it. So the outcome that I really want for the people I support in leadership is for you to be comfortable in yourself. Don't be like me. Don't be like me, but I have to be nice when I'm honest. Don't be like me. Don't take time and, and enroll everybody when I'm a bulldozer. Don't be like me. Don't go, don't go down where you belong up there. If you want people to be where you are, you elevate them. You don't leave them where they are and enable them. So I believe to this, and I want this. I want this for the for all of you. I want you to have a stand and not follow a trend, no matter what happens. I want you to be flat, non-emotional, non-judgmental. Why? Because everybody's truth is true. So for the girl who said, I invalidated her, no matter what I say, she will say, I invalidated her. So that's her truth, and so it is. And that's leadership, acknowledging. Yeah? So my final mention to all of you is you don't have to know anything to begin with. What I want you to do is start doing. Just whatever it is that you want to do, start doing it. Believe in yourself. And keep at it. Stay focused on your mastery. And inshallah, you know, all the blessings will come. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Shirin Rose, the essence of your mastery. Fantastic, wasn't it? Eh? Focus on your wanted and you become the most wanted. <laughs> <laughs>